surely not another book about metabolism. I can almost hear it being said. There seems to be a plethora of books at present about how to prevent oneself becoming obese, how to lose weight if one has already become so, what one should eat, and especially what one should not eat. There are books about the importance, or otherwise, of exercise for maintaining weight and health, and books about how to live longer by eating the diet of our Paleolithic ancestors, or our near relations in the animal world. But none of these really addresses the field that biochemists know as intermediary metabolism. That term refers to the chemical processes that occur within our bodies, mostly within our cells, that transform what we eat into useful energy, new bodily constituents and waste products. Indeed, from a reading of current popular science on the topic of metabolism, you might well have the impression that Metabolism refers to just the burning of foodstuffs, with the result either of weight loss or weight gain. You would not then appreciate the myriad of chemical reactions that build up the substances of which we are made, break them down again when they are no longer needed, and create safely disposable waste products. Even our DNA, the material of which our genes is made, is formed from chemical building blocks that are the product of such reactions. Many features of intermediary metabolism must have evolved a very long time ago, since they are common to all life forms, from bacteria to mammals. Chapter 1. But it seems natural for us to have a particular interest in our own metabolism, human metabolism. And there is good reason for that. What goes on inside us is a product not just of chemical reactions, but of a flow of information between different body parts, regulating just what happens and when. So that when I have just eaten a big meal, my cells begin to store nutrients, and when I have not eaten for some time, they will begin to release nutrients from these stores. Chapters 2 and 3 Such information flow, called metabolic regulation, is a product largely of our hormonal and nervous systems. Chapter 4 If there is one feature of intermediary or cellular metabolism that is widely known, it is perhaps the so-called Krebs cycle, called by scientists the citric acid cycle, discovered by Hans Krebs, later Professor Sir Hans Krebs. But even those who know the term may well not appreciate just what this assembly of chemical reactions does. It can be seen as the final common pathway by which all nutrients are broken down and linked to the release of energy in a form that can be used by cells for all the processes that require it. Chapter 5 The really wonderful and often not appreciated feature of our metabolism is that it is active, and changing all the time. When you eat breakfast after fasting overnight, metabolism changes quickly. When you start to exercise, it changes even more quickly 